In this episode of Falmouth in Focus, we'll get an update on the Falmouth Water Main Replacement Project, learn about a creative and unconventional nonprofit organization that does a little bit of everything, and tour the Nobska Lightkeeper's house as it undergoes a major renovation. All this and much more on this edition of Falmouth in Focus. Hello and welcome to Falmouth in Focus, FCTV's current affairs program. I'm your host, Michael Kasparian. Drivers in Falmouth are well aware of the water main replacement project that has been detouring traffic since last spring. As this phase of the project nears completion, we met with Water Superintendent Steve Rafferty to get the plan for future work and planned traffic detours during the next few weeks. I'm Steve Rafferty, the town's water superintendent. I'm standing out here on uh, Main Street between Nye Road and Falmouth Heights Road. We're in the last segment of the 16-inch water main that we're installing. That water main replaces the town's original water main installed in 1898. We have put in close to three miles of pipe already. We have less than half a mile to go. Behind me you can see we're removing water services from the old pipe over to another not quite so old pipe so we can create room and put the last piece of pipe in. We're hoping that by the first or second week of March we have all of the big pipe in and then we'll come back down Main Street doing all of the services and cross ties to the side streets. I know it's been an inconvenience to everybody this winter but doing it now and not the spring, summer or fall um, has been least disruptive. The weather's been great We've gotten ahead of schedule a little bit, projects running on budget, and at the end of the day when we pave this all in the fall, it'll all look pretty and nice. You might say, why are we putting a new pipe in? Well, in 1898, this part of town wasn't as developed as it is, and the need for fire protection wasn't as great as it is. In addition, after 120 years with a cast iron pipe in the ground, the eight inch inside that started off this big is now about this big, and occasionally causes a little bit of discolored brown water. The new pipe has got five times as much carrying capacity for water, It'll provide excellent fire protection to the heart of the town here, and um, the water quality for everybody who's attached to it will be cleaner and better because it's coming through a brand new clean pipe. So the cast iron pipe uh, was made back in the era of um, sort of the 1890s industrial era steam engines and iron and steel. Um, in the 50s they developed uh, ductile iron which is actually a little more flexible. Cast iron pipe cracks easily when it gets hit or damaged in any way. Um, hence we've had a few water main breaks because of the age of the pipe. Uh, I'm sure a few of you have remembered those along the way. The new pipe is much more flexible and is probably good for a minimum 100 maybe 150 years depending upon uh, a lot of variables over time, but um, it's been an interesting job because if you can imagine we're digging down over 120 years of history every time we go into the uh, ground. Pretty good records. We've not run into many surprises, but a couple. Um, and all in all, uh, a job that's gone better than expected and uh, a job that I think the town can be proud of when it's finished. We've been doing detours all the way down Main Street one of the reasons behind the way we're detouring is it gives the contractor the entire road to work in. That means he gets the job done in half the time. So the detours have, of course, been sort of staggered down the road. The portion we're in here, um, traffic will go down Nye Road um, and back up either uh, Scranton um, or as we get closer to Falmouth Heights, traffic will have to go down Robbins Road and come back up Falmouth Heights Road. So it's week to week. Um, if you want to get more information, go to the town's webpage, go to the water webpage where you'll find my address. Ask to be put on the notification list. Every Wednesday night or Thursday morning I publish out to all of the people that have signed up a picture of where we're going to, work in, going to be working 
and what we're going to be doing and where the detours will be. If you want to stay informed, that's the best way. All of us in Falmouth hope that the winter weather continues to cooperate so that the project can be completed on schedule. Thanks to Jeff Wyman for that update. It's time now for the three things from Town Hall, FCTV's condensed version of the takeaways from recent municipal meetings. Selections are chosen based on community impact. The McGrath Consulting Group presented their findings to the Select Board at their last meeting regarding the study about a new fire station in Falmouth. The study summarized the ideal location for a new station based on emergency call volume over the past three years. The study also explained that the current locations of stations in Falmouth are ideal or close to ideal. The West Falmouth station is not an ideal placement of a fifth station. Rather, a location somewhere around Sandwich Road in Falmouth was shown to be the best based on the data collected. My name is Dr. Tim McGrath. I'm the CEO of McGrath Consulting. We're a public sector consulting company. We have clients in 37 states and about 400 municipalities. We were hired by the town to do a fire station analysis, which we'll give a very brief description of that today or this evening. This is a, uh, an ultimately report that's well over 100 pages, including appendix, and there's much, much more information here. And I can assure you that many of the uh, questions raised are already answered in the report. After a lengthy interview process, the Select Board appointed nine members to the future Fire Station Citizens Advisory Committee. The board cited great interest from the community to be involved with this committee. The new committee will be charged with recommendations for a new fire station location and will report back to the Select Board at a future meeting. Thank you to everyone. Again, um, just a reminder that these meetings are going to be open. We expect um, this committee, as soon as they get started, um, to hold these meetings so that folks can weigh in as you have weighed in at our other hearing. So thank you to everyone. Um, for folks who are first applicants, there'll be other. If we ever get to the process where we're building a fire station, we usually, usually have a committee for uh, big projects like that, so there'll be more work to do. Um, so thank you for um, your interest. Ten petitioner articles were presented to the board in this meeting as well. Articles ranging from banning alcoholic beverage containers of less than or equal to 100 milliliters, roof-mounted solar panels, and for the West Falmouth Fire Station to remain open and staffed until a new station is open and operational. Spring Town Meeting is scheduled for April 13th. This article can be withdrawn, uh, uh, but um, anyway, there it is, and that's the problem, and we have to deal with it. And I mean, this whole thing is three separate issues, although they are intertwined. Um, like I said, if we don't handle it in the previous article, that's the reason it's there, kind of like a safety valve. Great, thank it's, you. It's on your shoulders. Thanks. Thank you. To see the meetings in their entirety, check out Government Channel 15's program schedule at fctv.org. We're going to take a quick break to learn about an adoptable dog from Friends of Falmouth Dogs. And when we return, We'll learn about some of the events celebrating Black History Month in Woods Hole. Stay with us. Back scratches and belly rubs make our dog Nala extremely happy. She's a beautiful three and a half year old mixed breed who weighs about 45 pounds. Although meeting new people can be scary for Nala, she soon decides they're her best friends. Running and chasing balls are some of her favorite activities and sometimes she returns the ball to you. Taking long walks is no problem for Nala since she's energetic and walks easily on the leash. She is in excellent health, up to date on shots, and is house and crate trained. So far, Nala seems to like the many dogs she's met on walks, but we have no first-hand observations about what she thinks about cats. Nala is an intelligent dog that understands several commands. She wants nothing more than to bond with and be loved by her new owner. If that might be you, please call Friends of Falmouth Dogs at 508-548-7742. Welcome back. Every year, members of the Woods Hole community come together to celebrate Black History Month. This year's theme marks the 150th anniversary of the 15th Amendment and the rights of black men to vote after the Civil War. Lecturers will discuss the fight for the vote, equal rights, and the many ways in which the black voice was silenced or destroyed altogether as black people attempted to cast their ballots. So the theme of this year's celebration is about African American and the vote. And it actually highlights two constitutional like uh, important milestones within our country. 
about you know the struggles of African Americans, what they've went through as far as uh, trying to secure their voting rights. And so this year, we're highlighting that with a number of activities and we're following the national directive as to understanding what are the historical perspectives and hopefully we can bring some contemporary issues into it as well. So the first event we had, we partnered with Falmouth Academy for the first time and they co-sponsored a film screening of Selma at their, at Falmouth Academy. Uh, we had about 125 attendees, so we had a pretty great turnout. Um, so on Tuesday, the 18th, we had a lecture by Reverend Will, who is a local reverend here for St. Barnabas Church. And then we're going to have a lecture by Dr. Daniel Black, who will be coming from Clark Atlanta University on Monday the 24th. And then on Thursday the 27th, we have our annual Harambe, which is going to be a really fun event. But one thing we're doing in addition to our Harambe celebration is a pilot study where we're actually having an essay contest this year for the students in Falmouth and Mashpee. And what we're asking them to do is actually give us an opinion piece about you know, what they think about voting rights and how can we ensure that adults p participate fully in the American democracy. I think it's important, uh, Black History Month is an important event, uh, one, from an educational perspective, if you think through traditional means uh, through in the classrooms or through other forms of education, that there are nuances in the history that's not often talked about. So I think it's an opportunity for us as a, a society or a community to sort of kind of like really understand some of the contributions of African Americans that we don't typically know about and to learn more about our history. And you know, just for people to know, this is our history collectively as a country. And so no matter what your background is, I think we are celebrating our past and while we continue to like move forward and you know, uh, as what type of works or what we need to do into the future. I think there is currently a large push in the community, both in Falmouth and in Woods Hole, to make things here more diverse and inclusive. And by having these events, we are showing people that we, we appreciate the, the different heritage that are here, that we want to celebrate those and that by hopefully having these events will bring people together who are interested in these same things and, and they can start better collaborations to make our community more diverse and inclusive. I mean, many organizations often try to bring in some sort of like cultural diversity uh, through celebrating these types of events. And so one of the things that, you know, Black History Month has been a part of is how do we change the community structure within Woods Hole to make it more welcoming, to make it more inclusive. So these are some of the things that are, you know, have been in play for quite some time. Now, of, of recent year, in recent years, we've seen a growth in terms of like, you know, in making sure that we're becoming more diverse and inclusive. And there's a lot of initiatives on the grounds right now. So Black History Month has been part of that journey and we're just glad that it's grown into something much more bigger for the Woods Hole community at large. For more information about Black History Month events in Woods Hole, visit woodsholediversity.org slash events. Thanks to Alan Russell for that story. A 1921 painting depicting a slice of Woods Hole's colonial history has been cleaned and restored and can now be viewed at the main branch of the Falmouth Public Library. FCTV visited the library to get more information about the artwork from director Linda Collins. The painting, The Landing of the British at Little Harbor, was donated to the Falmouth Public Library by Lois and Robert Griffin. And Mr. Griffin is the great-grandson of the artist Franklin Lewis Gifford. Through his art, Mr. Gifford preserved the history of Woods Hole. His paintings are a visual history um, that we might not otherwise have. He gives us a glimpse of what Woods Hole looked like in the past. The painting we have was painted around 1921 and it's in its original frame. It's 20 inches by 44 inches. As good stewards of, of our collections, it was important to the Falmouth Public Library to properly preserve his work. And the library worked, has worked with uh, J. Miller Picture Framer in the past. Um, and so we were happy to work with him on this important project. So this uh, painting is a, a wonderful piece, as you can probably see from the, from the visuals. When they uh, acquired it, uh, and it came to my attention, it needed um, a lot of tender loving care and restoration. Uh, there was a heavy coating of varnish on the canvas, which is not unusual. There were dribbles of it running down the front. There were physical punctures to the canvas itself. There was crackleture, which is the tendency of older oil paintings to, to crack and the edges of the paint to sort of curl up. 
and the uh, canvas itself had deteriorated to a point that it needed to be uh, uh, in, enhanced. Probably the, 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 most, the two most important parts involved removing the varnish that was on the painting, probably from, uh, from its origins. There might have been additional varnish added later. In this case, the, the canvas itself had deteriorated to a point that, that it would not withstand uh, a long life, uh, let alone being stretched and, and displayed publicly in a frame. So that involves a process known as relining, which is essentially, in, in most cases, and in this case, adding a new archival canvas to the canvas that's under the painting uh, to begin with. The, the goal is always for the artist that's doing the restoration work to bring it back to the point that reasonably resembles what they sense is, is the original condition of the painting. Mr. Gifford was said to have really gotten the blue of the skies right, and now after the cleaning we can really see that that's true. Before it was cleaned, we couldn't clearly make out a lot of what is included in the painting, but now we can clearly see a British flag on one of the ships and the sailors standing uh, on the, on the gra ground. We can also see uh, windmills on the other shoreline. So it's, it's very interesting uh, how much more was revealed to us once this cleaning process took place. So we were happy to be good stewards and take care of the work um, so that it could be preserved for future generations. Be sure to check out the restored painting opposite the library's circulation desk. Thanks to Andrew Richards for that story. Inspiration is Everywhere is a Falmouth nonprofit organization that believes that it can inspire a better world by expanding the ways in which people view the world artistically. Their primary focus is to reduce the amount of landfill waste through inspiring people to utilize recycled and upcycled art materials. Founder Samantha Bauer gives us some insight into the group's mission. It's a privilege to present to Samantha Bauer and Inspiration is Everywhere the No Place for Hate Falmouth Civic Leadership Award for 2020. Samantha. That was really great. I was a little surprised when they first told me. I just, I know um, the past recipients uh, that they've given it to and it was a really big honor for me just, you know, seeing the work that those people have done in our community and, you know, on a greater scale. Um, so that was, it was really honoring but also humbling. Let me tell you why we honor Samantha and her work today. Let me quote the mission statement for Inspiration is Everywhere. Our purpose is to create and strengthen social bonds through incorporated learning and community building. We seek to combine the elements of education and creative growth with community outreach, advocacy, and services for people of varying needs. We offer creative solutions to unconventional problems. We believe that we can inspire a better world through our creative outlets that seek to expand the ways in which people view the world artistically. It is also our unifying belief that everyone is an artist to varying degrees, and that with the right creative process, art can and should be educational. We organize and host different events focused on community enrichment that showcase the talent of local residents in a fun and interactive learning environment and foster a sense of belonging. We help out with Cape Cod Pride. Um, we run their activities stations at uh, Pride Fest every year. Um, so like the tie-dye station, the games, the photo booth, we set all that stuff up. And No Place for Hate Falmouth. We do a lot of work with them. I know a lot of the people on the board there, and um, so I wanted to support their organizations. Uh, Falma Service Center, uh, we promote a lot of their stuff, and um, because mainly a lot of what we do is uh, informational assistance and resource networking. People need lots of help with stuff, and they don't know where to go or where to start asking or what's available, um, so we try to connect them with different resources. For more information about Inspiration is Everywhere, check out their Facebook page. Thanks to Bob Fenstermaker for that report. 
One of the most iconic locations in Falmouth is Knobska Light and its breathtaking views of Vineyard Sound. Thanks to the stewardship of the Friends of Knobska Light, the lighthouse tower was completely restored and the Keeper's House is currently undergoing a substantial preservation project that will convert the former residence into a maritime museum. Hello and welcome to Knobska Point. My name is Kathy Warath. I'm the president of the Friends of Knobska Light. I'm glad to be here with you today and share with you what's going on here up at Knobska. Back in 2015, we did the uh, tower, did some renovation of our tower here at Knobska, and now it's closed and the Keeper's House is closed because we are very busy here. We're in the middle of a huge construction project here, as you can see. A lot of work is being done to help us make this beautiful spot into a organization, into a museum that will be open to the public so that we can share the history and the future of Knopska with all. We very carefully designed a plan where we were able to start with the exterior of the house, got it all secure, and made sure that that was strong enough to last through this past winter, and then developed a plan as our resources became available to continue the work on the inside. And that's where we are right now getting the inside ready for our museum that will hopefully open uh, a soft opening in the spring of 2021. There was the first lighthouse here at Knobskit in 1829 and that was a light tower on top of the keeper's house itself. In 1876 they erected the current tower and the separate keeper's house and until 1972 when the last civilian lightkeeper retired Nobska was a home to families who took care of the lighthouse. Then it became housing for active duty Coast Guard members and they lived here and took care of the light until 1985. In 1985 it became housing for the commander of Southeast Sector New England and that was a rotating billet and any number of commanders lived here until 2013 when the Coast Guard chose not to continue to use it for housing. One of the challenges of doing a renovation is always you don't know what you're going to run into. Um, most of the building was actually in pretty good shape. There was some, some weird uh, framing that we ran into just because the Coast Guard did their own repairs. If you look up at the joists, we had to fur that down on a lot of the stuff um, just to give us a nice level plane. Um, for the future reception area. So as you can see, um, we've replaced all of the old electrical. Um, we're redoing all the HVAC. We've re-leveled the entire floor for the two buildings. Um, originally they were about three inches out. Um, redone all the lighting uh, for the future uh, museum. Coming up next, we'll, we'll be working on uh, insulating the, the walls, and we should really be into complete inside, interior um, by uh, the beginning of April. Nomska is a very special place to many people. It is an incredible view. We have a 270 degree view of the water. You can look south to the vineyard. You can look towards Woods Hole to the west. You can look back towards Falmouth to the east and you can enjoy the natural beauty, mostly unchanged from when the building was first built in 1876. I am proud to be a part of a member of the Friends of Knobska Light in making the vision to turn this beautiful icon into a, uh, an organization, a museum that will live forever to share the, the beauty of the area with not only the local uh, Falmouth community, but the community that comes to, to visit us year round. Stay tuned to future Falmouth in Focus episodes as we track the progress of the preservation. Thanks to Andrew Richards for that coverage. After a quick break, we'll check in with Ryan Collins from My Fishing Cape Cod. Stay with us. It's time now for our fishing report from Ryan Collins of My Fishing Cape Cod as he wraps up his latest fishing trip to sunny Costa Rica. Big needlefish. Literally right in front of me. Holy cow. I can't believe it. 
Look at this wheel. That guy's jumping like crazy. I was got to give up for the day. Nothing was going on. This is a big needlefish. Really nice one. Big needlefish. I can't believe it. I was just literally walking out of the water and he bit. Yeah, very cool. So I got a big needlefish right here. I think it's a needle. Oh, huge needlefish. I'll just grab my pliers. Look at the colors on this guy. Crazy teeth. I can't believe I that just happened. Try to unhook him without doing too much damage. That came out real easy. It's great. Man, look at that guy. That's so cool, Ryan. Big needle. All right, we'll get this guy back in the water. He was in two feet of water when he hit that epoxy jig. Pretty sweet. I didn't expect to be able to follow him for that far. Man, the colors on that guy. So cool. What a nice surprise. You just never know what's got to happen in Costa Rica when you're fishing from the beach. You really don't. That was, that was spectacular. Thanks to Ryan Collins from My Fishing Cape Cod for that report. Teachers at Morse Pond School and across the Falmouth School District have been collaborating to support their students' reading and writing skills. Here's a look into the classrooms to see what that looks like. Students just finished reading Wonder, um, so they were responding to a prompt where they had to t discuss what challenges Augie faces throughout the text. Um, so they had to provide text evidence for that and really analyze the obstacle that he had faced and um, why it was such a challenge for a fifth grader to start school at that age. So they use their metal graphic organizer, which is a tool that we start introducing to them back in September, where they can um, really organize their writing in a way where they're able to have the resources to go back into the text and find a piece of text evidence that really works for them. Um, and going back and being able to analyze, okay, this piece of text evidence makes sense here, but why? You know, being able to really answer the question of why I'm using this to back up my response. Part of getting on the same page has meant that we are sharing a lot of information with each other and part of that information is what other teachers are doing in the building to help their students with their writing. Um, so some things that I'm seeing during that workshop time, I'm able to take back to my classroom, plan those lessons and implement them with my students. And what I'm seeing is that they're able to put together better written pieces um, and feel a lot more confident about what they're able to produce because of the feedback that I'm able to give them. Thanks to Ryan Weber for that report. FCTV wants you to know that television can be as easy as hitting record on your smartphone. We'd like to invite all Falmouth residents and visitors to share their slice of life with us. Email us your photos and videos or upload them to Facebook, Twitter or Instagram 
using the hashtag MyFalmouth or Falmouth in Focus to be featured on the show. Thank you to our most recent contributors. We leave you now with the sights and sounds from the Winter Vacation Animation Camp held right here at FCTV. Thank you for watching Falmouth in Focus. We'll see you next time. Thank you.